Hey, what's up, nerds? It is Paul once again at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, I want to talk about another one of the controversies in the old world community. That is the dragon problem, or question, or thing. Dragons. Let's talk about dragons. Um, so, you know, m my uh, thoughts on Limehammer were, you know, so popular and well-received amongst the community, I thought I would uh, tackle this other controversial issue. Now, just a note on the Limehammer video before, if you happen to watch that one. If not, it, go back a couple. Um, I think I my tone might have been a bit off from what I was hoping for, and um, I was uh, also, you know, some folks after pointed out a few things that I hadn't thought about before. So um, that's always, you know, I am always open to, you know, people giving me feedback on things and like, you know, I would rather be wrong today and right tomorrow, you know? So if we're all here, we're gonna learn together, explore and grow. And uh, I don't, I, on with the show, I suppose. So first up, let's talk about just where these dragons are in uh, these various armies. <clears throat> now, uh, I guess my slides are a little out of order here, but um, in general, yeah, you know, we have the armies that have literal dragons. So the elf armies and orcs and goblins have wyvern. Chaos has uh, their chaos dragon. Um, but then we have uh, some other things that basically qualify they're like in the same category they're just a, a different animal you know all of these things are like fly nine or fly ten they're mounts typically for lord level uh characters and uh they it hit hard they're hard to kill and uh they're generally really strong and pretty expensive so when I'm looking at this, kind of dumping it into this this category, you know, the Empire Griffins, the Bretonian Hippogriff, uh, you know, the Lamassu, the uh, let's see, the Tomb Kings, whatever that new bone thing is, the Terrorgeist and Zombie Dragon and Vampire Counts, um, all of those sorts of things are really what I'm thinking of. Uh, as kind of being in the same class of things. If we're just going to kind of all call dragons, but it, it's not necessarily all winged, scaly things. Um, so out of the total 16 armies, looks like um, just kind of my flipping through these, that there's 10 out of the 16 that have uh, something along these lines, you know, varying strengths and sizes, but uh, most of them are actually solid choices, I think. Um, so a majority of the armies, and then out of the nine supported, it's seven out of the nine supported. And, you know, if we expand that out a little bit to include other monstrous mounts, and even just some monsters that are really strong on their own, it's really, it's every army except dwarves that have access to these things. And as we'll see, dwarves have a bunch of dwarf slayer, or, uh, uh, monster slayer stuff so they have a lot of tools for dealing with uh dragons and monsters so um you know they're kind of like that little outlier that's um you know they're different but they're kind of the the scissors to the paper of uh that sort of uh build all right so as i said um they're these things, they're monsters, they're mounts for characters. They're typically fly nine or 10. Um, most of them, actually, I think just about all of them have stomp attacks. Um, now on average, uh, they're adding four wounds to your hero and adding two to the toughness of you know, the character on the mount. Their weapon skill on average is five and their strength on average is six. So these guys are gonna be on threes twos 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 like a lot 
you know, there's a pretty wide points range for these from 95 to 290. Most of their attacks have AP2. Lots and lots of these have fear and terror. Most of them are large targets. Um, in addition to that, they actually all have, or not all of them, but a number of them also have like breath weapons or some other attack or thing or special rule that's going to be either adding more damage or other value to be added to them. Uh, the average, just kind of assuming that, you know, a an enemy that they're attacking is, you know, the, uh, basic human stats, um, you know, three across the board and um, like a five up save seems to be like that the actual uh, fairly common level of save for most things in this game. Um, yeah, your average damage output is looking like about four. Um, I did do a spreadsheet for like all of this. Um, so I'm not just kind of like pulling these numbers out of the air. Uh, you know, possibly not totally complete, but you know, I, I, there was some quantitative analysis in this to come up with these numbers. Uh, if anybody wants it, I could probably share it out there fairly easily, but um, I don't know. I'm lazy. I'm not going to bother for now. So what are our challenges with these dragons? They are hard to kill. They have high weapon skill, so your opponent is going to be um, you know, having bad to hit. They're high toughness, so their to wound is going to be bad. They typically have good saves. Uh, many of them improving the save of you know whatever is riding them, and a lot of them will have wards and regeneration saves, or will because they are character mounts. They'll by virtue of that be able to take magic items that will give them wards and regeneration saves. They have pretty high damage output in general. Um, you know, one model being able to uh, take out four enemy models in one swipe is pretty strong. Uh, a lot of them have fear and terror, so you can just kind of make the enemy panic off the table. They're very mobile. They are, um, you know, they're single models. They have like fly nine, fly ten, and that gives them a lot of ability to just go wherever they want to go. And that is very strong. Um, and they're an interesting one that I actually haven't seen mentioned elsewhere. And the thing that I haven't heard people talk about too much in general, um, the unit strength situation, uh, because that does play into combat results. And, you know, if you win combat, what happens? Or actually, if, if you lose combat, what happens? Um, their unit strength is static. So their unit strength is always their number of starting wounds. Um, you know, if I were writing the errata for all of these things, I think what I would do is change their the way unit strength works on monsters so that they their unit strength is equal to the number of wounds they have remaining rather than uh, what their starting wounds are so that you know you you can eventually start chipping away at them and make them more likely to run all right so what do we do about these how do we slay the dragon um well a few of these things are you know it, it, just not really dealing with the dragon at all um skirmish units and guards and scouts they are going to be very good at screening out these dragons. Just get in the way and make it so that your opponent doesn't have anywhere to land a charge with them into the units that um, they would really want to get into. There are, you know, throughout pretty much every army will have um, some unit that vanguards or scouts and is pretty cheap. And pretty much everybody also has skirmishers that are really cheap, you know, where like a minimum size unit is well under 100 points. So that really gives you a lot of tools to be able to, you know, throw a number of small units out on the board. 
to really kind of create zones of control and prevent you know enemy models like a dragon from exploiting their uh their mobility in general um you know particularly if you have skirmishers that are also vanguarding or also scouting you know, even better they can get out there right in front of your army from the first turn so that you can uh, just have an active screen going on the whole time skirmishers in general are very powerful and uh, there has been some talk about them and that's something that i want to explore further in a future video um uh, i think they're i think the general vibe that i have is they're strong but not broken like they're just a good thing to have they're a good um tool that you can employ to do some interesting things and uh, but it, it seems like people are not actually really complaining about it they're just like wow this is pretty good um which i would agree yeah um so option two kill the dragon this is a hard one because trying to kill a dragon in melee combat is going to be very hard uh which you know for, for the reasons that were previously mentioned um i think the best route to go for that is shooting and uh magic of one type or another uh whether it's magic missiles assailment vortexes uh yeah, anything that's going to do damage to that monster from uh you know a spell so I, one of the other things here is uh you know your artillery um one of the other sorts of things that people have talked about comping is uh having lots of artillery pieces in your army like oh what do you do about your opponent taking six cannons you're gonna have a really bad time you know what's gonna have the absolute worst time is anybody that brought a dragon on the battlefield because cannon is going to rip them up um uh things that do multiple wounds are also very good here not a very common thing in the game overall but for sure it's an option that's out there so if you give uh, one of your characters, a weapon that has uh, multiple wounds, that's uh, definitely going to be a benefit to you. Uh, it's going to take down a monster much more quickly. The, the big item on here is Monster Slayer. So it that is one of your universal special rules. It is not on a lot of units. Uh, so if you roll a six to hit, it just kills the monster. <laughs> um so that's strong the the trick is actually rolling that six so having a, a character with enough attacks and monster slayer in order to do that and as i said it's not a very common thing to have on your units in fact it there are many armies that have nothing at all that has monster slayer there is an important side note to that though there is a magic weapon in the core rules so available to any army i guess sort of asterisk except dwarves but they're the exception to every rule um everybody can take an artifact that has that will give your character of choice monster slayer now am i saying everybody should be taking that artifact i'm sorry not artifact thinking age of sigmar uh that magic weapon definitely not everybody but uh one of the things that um ultimately is going to have an impact on the presence of dragons being around and uh their overall power level is people that are taking you know the the dragon slaying sword and you know other uh characters and units that also have monster slayer so that really is a pretty hard counter to these things and on top of that there's a lot of armies as well that have something like um a character on pegasus or something else similar to that where you 
are able to take that character that has your monster slaying sword and give them a lot of mobility to go monster hunting. Um, so I think that's going to be an interesting play. I think um, I feel like there's going to be some folks that are going to take that and start messing up people's day that are bringing big old dragons onto the table. Um, as far as other things, resist and avoid. Um, you know, being immune to psychology, that is going to give you immunity to the terror and the fear. Um, if you're unbreakable, they're going to have to kill you to a man uh, with that dragon. So you can just kind of chaff them up with a unit and hope it can last a few rounds of combat so that they won't be able to do anything. Um, feigned flight, um, you know, getting a unit in there and just keep retreating but still being in the way um challenges are another interesting thing here that's going to really slow down that dragon's ability to wipe you so if you have a character in unit or a unit champion you, your first round of combat with them you challenge and that's going to protect the rest of the unit while that challenge is still going on and a lot of characters are going to be a bit more durable so although you're going to have that you know that character on dragon that is going to do a lot of damage when they're up against a um a, a, another character that has multiple wounds and a three up armor save or a two up armor save and they've got a ward or a regeneration save you know, and they have high weapon skill and they have high toughness. Uh, it's going to erode their ability to just pop your unit immediately. So I think that's uh, really a good option. Um, and then the final option, if you can't beat them, join them. And I am actually a huge advocate of this in particular. Um, as we noted earlier on in the presentation monsters are everywhere in this and they're good like this edition has uh really good monsters like all across the board and i think one of the 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 best criticisms that i have seen of uh the dragon and general monster issue is that they're kind of under costing but it's pretty easy for Games Workshop to come in, reevaluate, and change points on things. And they've been doing that for years and years now with their other game systems. And it's been very effective. And I would not be surprised whatsoever if uh, six months or a year down the line, we see a bunch of these powerful dragons getting jacked up, you know, 10, 15, 20% in their points to uh, try and balance out the game a little bit better. Um, so, um, how much of a problem is this really? As I said, there. I think the, the best criticism that I've really seen of these is that they're probably a bit under-costed. Um, but I, I think time will tell. Part of the issue, I think, is that the game is still very new. And there just haven't been enough games played yet for the meta to really develop. And, you know, there's people that are going in and just having a bad experience with these dragons. Like, they are very powerful. And, you know, they, you know, they roll up to a game with an all-comers list and then um, just get completely wrecked by a dragon that's just going to go hit him in the flank, and then go pop, pop, pop down the line, and the dragon's going to single-handedly take out most of their army. That said, you know, that player bringing the all-comers list did not really come prepared for dealing with a dragon. So, you know, if they retool their list, throw in some things to deal with those dragons, um, their next games will be different. Uh, they'll have some, you know, some better uh, opportunity to do um, more damage 
to the dragon, mitigate the losses. Um, there definitely is a problem with trying to kill these things in melee combat. I think that's really just not something that you should really be going for unless you know you have a monster slayer. Um, I think shooting things off the board is a reasonable solution. Uh, the problem with that is that you have to catch them when they're not in combat, and without having the ability to retreat out of combat, um, you've got to either you, you basically you have to like lose a combat and have them not be able to overrun into something else. So that could be a problem. So you have to kind of get a lot of damage onto a dragon or possibly take it out entirely before it does anything. Um, there is high availability for these things. Lots of armies have like these straight up, uh, you know, dragons and dragon equivalents available to them in their list with allies. I think everybody has these available to them to some degree. And, uh, that's probably a, a decent use of allies. Um, there really are a few things. Um, again, another video that I kind of want to tackle at some point is uh you know what do you actually use allies for and uh where are the opportunities with that um i think again it, universal access to monster slayer is uh, a big thing and if I, I think at competitive events if you go to a gt you have a lot of um good players that are aware of the issue of these dragons they're going to have monster slaying stuff in there and you they're probably going to be popping a lot of dragons over the course of that game that captain on a pegasus man he is going to have a lot of dragon heads on his belt um pretty much everybody has access to really cheap skirmishers and chaff um vanguards scouts all of those sorts of things um you know, the ability to screen out these dragons is definitely there. And uh, with just the, the power and mobility of skirmishers, they can just dance around and just get in the way. And even if, you know, they get panicked off or they uh, just get picked up by the dragon, like, it, it's kind of okay. Like, it, they're, they're meant to die. They're meant to get in the way and you know prevent your opponent from getting in there and just completely wiping you and taking out your good units when you're getting hit in the flank and <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it um you know another thing that i did uh not mention in here one of the other ways to deal with this really is units that have a uh, high static combat resolution because all the a dragon is really going to get for combat resolution is what they kill and um if you have a high static combat resolution or at least a decent amount of it it's going to make it so that you know that dragon can do a decent amount of damage but their actual level of threat goes down because they're they're just not able to win the combat because they didn't they didn't kill enough stuff to get over your combat resolution. Um, so I think that's about it for now. Um, you know, kind of in summation, is this really a problem? Um, currently, I'm really inclined to say that this is more of a problem that is going to be solved by the metagame and balance out. And if anything, these probably could use uh, some points increases, which will probably happen in the future. So um, I think beyond that, uh, you know, things are already pretty limited uh, just by army composition. There's only so much stuff that you can throw in there. You're really limited to, in, in the armies that can even take multiples of these, um, you know, you're basically limited to two really good ones or like three meh ones. So, um, and then you still have only like a thousand points of troops left and like, you're not going to have a battle standard bearer. You're not going to have 
um, you know, like a very variety of other tools in your army to do things. So it's your there's going to be a cost involved if you go and spam these things and go too heavy on them. Um, now, you know, personally, I love having these sorts of models on the table, having big stompy monsters going through and plowing into the en enemy and eating guys is just cool. Like, I feel like that is just the, the it's like this epic cinematic thing, and you know, getting your uh, valiant knight plowing in and slaying that monster is just um, that that's just a, a, an awesome sort of experience to have on the tabletop. It's a, it creates these really great narrative experiences. So, um, you know, to an extent, uh, I would say, you know, even if it becomes more of a problem competitively, um, just try and embrace the drama of it, you know, have fun. It's, you know, it, in the end of the day, this is a game. So let's have fun. Like, like, yeah, like, are you going to maybe lose the game because of an overpowered dragon? Yeah, but, you know, there's other ways you can have fun. There's always the create a secondary objective for yourself that is maybe more narratively oriented to go and try and do something, try and still have fun. Maybe just try and kill that dragon. Maybe try to keep the dragon away from your stuff. Um, not so much as for... Um, you know, doing those things to win, but doing those things for, uh, you know, kind of a, a narrative purpose. Don't let the dragon have the joy of eating your guys. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to end it there. Um, it, it, as the, the book says, don't panic. I think, I, I really believe everything's going to be okay with this. Um, I think it's not that big of an issue to begin with. A lot of it will get taken care of by meta shifts. There's tools out there to deal with it. And, um, you know, if it really is something that continues to be an issue going forward, it's something that can be easily uh, fixed with points changes, I think. So with that, I'm going to call it there. We're at almost a half hour. So uh, that's enough of me rambling for now. And I'll talk to you all later.